I'm gonna be making an upgrade on my recording equipment and the audio on this video is probably not gonna be the best because I don't feel like getting trying to capture audio in a lot of different ways for the different types of scenarios I'm gonna be in here but uh, I I've showed this before my kind of recording setup down here in my basement got these lights set up I've added another light over there uh, because it was always kind of dark as I recorded down on the table right here but uh, what I want to what I'm gonna upgrade this weekend is I'm gonna upgrade this little stand right here I have this uh, backdrop stand that my wife used for photography and that goes all the way across over to there and that's where I hang this off of for my camera and the boom for my microphone and the other stuff that I've had but this thing is just so wobbly anytime I ever touch the camera or anything it starts shaking of course you can see that and it doesn't make for good quality so what I would have to do is is uh, push start on this and it would start doing that and so I'd have to wait before I start talking to make sure that it's completely stopped vibrating because it doesn't look good otherwise and then if I ever had to zoom it or try to do manual focus or anything just with how wobbly this is it's been terrible so I'm gonna make an upgrade on that and I'm gonna replace this and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make uh, basically like a like a swing set I'm just gonna make an A-frame out of 2x4 and 4x4 to where I make this thing absolutely sturdy and uh, so anyways that's what I'm gonna be doing this weekend and I will be showing me going through those steps so let's see how it goes alright so I got my stuff to build my new recording stand with and I've gone back and forth so many times on just using 2x4s or using 4x4s or a mixture of the both and I've about just settled on using 2x4s and if 2x4s don't cut it well I'll just add in some rigidity or I've got a couple other plans if it doesn't end up working out but for now I'm just gonna do this with 2x4s for for one reason is well it's cheaper but not not by a whole lot I mean I'd say probably 20 or 30 bucks so that's not a huge reason but it does factor in but the other reason is uh, we're, we're trying to sell our house and uh, I'm just planning on if we have to move anytime soon I want to make things as portable as possible and if I make this thing completely out of 4x4s four it's just going to make things even more difficult so 2x4s is, is what I'm going with for that main reason I'm trying to keep things as, as portable as possible I mean if we do end up moving it's going to be crazy okay so here's kind of how I want it to be of course it's going to be A-frame so there's going to be another one coming over here but I've got an 8 foot um, so I, of course this is going to be 8 foot the, the stud itself and then this is going to be 2 foot I want so I'm gonna have a four foot spread down underneath here so the only thing like I said it doesn't have to be pretty the only thing that I do need to make sure is right is my cuts on top and cuts on bottom to make sure everything is is flat on the bottom and that on the top it's gonna it's gonna um, be where the where the two by four fits the cross beam fits in between the the a-frame really well so what I did is um, I could have used trick here and you know I'm a math teacher so I was thinking about how to use trig here but really I don't even need to know exactly what the angles are I just need it to be the same proportion as that over there I still need it to be an 8 by 2 and of course that's feet but since we're talking about proportionality it doesn't matter as long as as I keep it proportional so this is just in inches so this is 8 inches by 2 inches and then on the bottom of the 2 by 4 over there I want it basically to be the same angle except instead of it being this it needs to be it needs to be this smaller angle so what I'm gonna do is once I cut this off I'm gonna try to cut this real clean is I'm gonna take this and just set it down on the base as a template to be able to mark that angle off so that so that whenever that 2 by 4 sits on the ground it's not sitting like that it's sitting flat on the ground and I'll show this as I go but I got these right here and I'm gonna put this on here to hold that cross beam and then on top of that I'm also probably going to put another 2x4 up underneath here but I'll show that as I go through here so ready to make this cut right here wearing safety goggles I never would have wore safety goggles when I was a young young guy um, I grew up doing woodwork working with my mom she she did craft business and we really did kind of an assembly line type stuff where we'd make hundreds of pieces and uh, anyways did lots of woodwork as a kid and I never wore safety glasses and you know you do that because you feel kind of manly but you only get two eyes and if something goes into your eye you're done so just wear glasses and I would be wearing hair protection if I was cutting all day long but I've got like eight cuts to make today so I'm not gonna worry about that 
for hearing protection, but I am going to protect my eyes whenever I'm doing this cutting. So I'm going to cut this right here, just using circular saw. Let's get it done. Okay, now this is one of the pieces that I cut off the top and like I said, I, I want the same angle but I need it to be basically what's going to make the other angle 90 degrees. So what I'm going to do instead of cutting, cutting it in a crazy angle like this is I'm going to set, this is on the bottom, the top part up there is already cut. So what I'm going to do is just take this cut piece and of course I know using this as the pattern is not the best but again it doesn't have to be pretty it doesn't have to be perfect but this is going to get it pretty close so what I'm going to do is just take this flat against this side right here and that right there is what I need so now when I cut that that will make this sit flat while that angle up there is going straight up and down be perpendicular to the ground so I'm just going to mark those off on all these on the feet of these Make sure I put it the right direction for the angle up there, and we should be good. Okay, and I wasn't paying attention and drew all these backwards on these other three, so that's why I got one scratched out. Okay, so that's how it's gonna be. So you can see up here, Got that real steep angle cut there. That way that 2x4 is going to fit right between there. I'm going to put that little that little U-shape metal brace right there. And then down here, I have this real shallow angle cut to make sure that that sits flat on the floor. So what I'm going to do is get one of these. Put it right there basically. I'm going to make it where it's just flush with the top and then I'm going to take another 2x4 and just put a, just a real short piece right underneath there just for further stabilization and I'm going to take another cross piece about midway or so just run it across there to stabilize everything and then I may run another one down here a little ways so I can run a basically a 45 brace up from from the A here up to the to the main cross beam so that's our next Okay, for my cross pieces, I'm going to cut two 6-inch pieces. This is going to be up at the very top. I'm going to cut two 15-inch pieces. That's going to be down for me to put the little 45-degree angle brace. And then 32 is going to be the one down a little bit below halfway to just really make the A real rigid so it doesn't want to want to toe in or anything like that. So I need two 6, two 15, two 32. Let's rip those real quick. So on this little cross piece, I'm going to go ahead and drill some pilot holes here, and I'm going to hold that piece of two by four in there and really clamp down to keep everything square here. So I'm going to drill these pilot holes here, and I remember when I was a little kid, and mom and dad saw me trying to build something, they'd say, oh, you better drill pilot holes, or you're going to split that. And I hated it when they told me that, because I didn't ever want to get an extra bit out to try to do that. But anyways, <laughs> I know to do that now. Yeah, don't make too much fun of my piece of junk drill here. <laughs> Cheapest drill I've ever had, but it's lasted the longest of any drill I've ever had either.
flat down there. Looks good. All right, let's build another one of these real quick. Need these to be about twenty six and a half. On this side. And that's gonna to be to the shortest corner. Let's flush in there. So twenty six and a half to the shortest one on that one also. Alright, easy enough. <clears throat> Alright, so for this cross piece, I already got a 45 John on there and have it here because there's a knot right there I'm trying to avoid. So I need to draw this 126 to the short side, I mean 26 and a half to the short side. Alright, and on the way I'm going to attach these braces is I'm going to actually screw this in the underside of the cross beam and then well it's going to be like let's go ahead and pull this all this other junk out of the way I've got the two back lights on because those are going to stay but I got to pull these other lights out and all this other stuff out it's just crazy Worth this. I had that pushed all the way up against the ceiling up there to try to stabilize it a little bit, but it's ridiculous that I ever even tried that. I mean, I made a bunch of videos with this, but yeah, it's terrible. So, okay. All right. Hopefully, this fits in here. Okay, I do not like these little couplers I have. I'm taking those out and just screwing that thing straight in. Okay, so I'm gonna have to add something to keep this kind of movement from happening. That's unacceptable. Okay, so some problems with it swaying. I was I was afraid it was going to be swaying front to back. There's no problem with that. The problem is, is it swaying left to right? And um, I know typically in in construction, I mean the the uh, limited experience I've had with that, I've helped build a couple barns, built a um, helped to build a house in high school in a class I had. It was a pretty cool class, but the way typically you give rigidity to a structure like this is you start putting on tin or you start putting up sheetrock and that's what solid that's what makes it solid well that's not that's not gonna work here because I don't want to put a big old piece of tin or sheetrock or something like that just a, a sheet of something on the back there so I didn't have another choice I had to use a cheater here and just stub this little thing in right here where it hits up against the wall 
and then that way there's no left to right movement really. My basement is, I'm basically in a bomb shelter. This is just a complete solid concrete enclosure here. So that's up against concrete. So that's, that's definitely rock solid there. Okay. Now the last thing is, <clears throat> and I showed this on my video, whenever I showed my recording setup several months ago, this was the cross piece up there. And what I did is I had pipe clamps, hose clamps that were holding on these for the shaft for my camera and then this boom for my, for my microphone. And uh, I thought about using pipe clamps, but I called my brother and my brother's an electrician and he, he mentioned something that is gonna work out exactly right. So what I got is some of these conduit holders. Be perfect. I'm gonna screw this right in up there and then put, put those through there. This is gonna work. Perfect. It's got a hole drilled already for me just to put a screw right in there. Nothing. This thing is going to be awesome. Okay, so I tried to just put a drywall screw through there. And that's too wimpy, so I mean I tried that and it was spinning around too easy. So what I'm going to do, so I got some big old nasty wood screws. I'm going to put in there and that will hold it and I'm going to put one of these little drywall screws up underneath there to keep it from really spinning around. Okay, so one of those conduit holders was not good enough. It just wasn't going to hold it from wanting to swing like this. Like this. So I put two of them on there, and that's holding it pretty good, I think. Still not perfect, but at this point, I don't know if I can get it absolutely perfect. It probably was never going to happen. All right, and then we can hang the mic from over here. And I know the mic's going to swing a little bit, but what are you going to do? Way more stable. <laughs> All right, so there you go, and I can hang off more stuff now. Just hanging off over there. If I decide to do that, for now I'm wore out today. Of course, you look at something like that and you think, "Oh, that's easy. I'll do that in 30 minutes." Well, if everything worked perfectly, it would. Well, it would take an hour probably if everything worked perfectly the first time, but. That's never the way it happens, especially when you really don't know what you're doing. All right, so just to kind of close things up, I'm recording now from the from the the new setup, and I'm touching the camera, and you can probably see it moving a tiny bit, but at least it stops wobbling within a second, I think, is what it looks like to me on the screen here. I'll check it on the computer upstairs, but at least it doesn't take 20 seconds for it to stop wobbling, so that's good. So I'm going to take this opportunity to show... Off this, I've got one box of this. My brother got this for me. He found it at a local gun shop as he was traveling down south for, for a thing. So, anyways, got my one box of this. I've been flint scanning every day for this, except the one day when I was sick and I had to stay home, I couldn't. But my brother flint scanned for, flint scanned for me on that day. The stuff just hasn't come in. Walmart's been dry the last couple of weeks on 22, but um, I'm just going to keep on, keep on flint scanning, wait for this to come in. So... This project was pretty fun today to get this recording setup done, getting this new A-frame set up here, and I guess I'm pretty happy f with it. I guess with as much as my skills could could come up with, I guess this is, is as good as I could expect. So, anyways, thanks for watching today. This is B coming to you from GNA.